Welcome once again to Cognition. You can find this course at blogs.umbc.ca forward slash cognition. Come and join us. For Module 2.1, What is Perception?, we're going to focus on two learning outcomes, a knowledge-based outcome and a value-based outcome. The knowledge-based outcome is to list and describe the three paradigms for studying perception. Value, we'd like to, for you to adopt an appreciation for the differing theoretical paradigms to approach perception. In this module, we're going to explore three central ideas in perception. The first is that perception is more than the sum of sensory inputs. The second is that it involves active bottom-up and top-down processing. And finally, perception is not a veridical representation of the real world. Are you ready to explore these ideas? Then let's begin. Let's take a look at our roadmap for this module, Module 2.1. We're going to first begin by addressing the question, what is perception? We'll also explore how it differs from sensation. We'll then move into the question on whether it differs, whether perception differs from cognition. Finally, we'll end with a brief introduction on paradigms to investigate perception, and we'll explore this last section in more detail in Module 2.2. So what is perception, and how does it differ from sensation? This is a question, or a series of questions, that have intrigued both philosophers and cognitive scientists for years. One of the issues is that, at the end result, is that we have a unified conscious representation of some experience. Yet, when we stop and think about all the components that lead us to that unified conscious experience, we begin to realize the complexity involved in something as simple as tasting a glass of wine. Let's explore this figure from the book The Science of Wine. You can see that flavor as a unified conscious representation in the brain is really made up of a whole bunch of sensations, perceptions, cognitions. So we've got uh, visual input, touch, gustatory or taste sensations, olfactory or smell sensations, things such as flavor intensity, emotional significance, memories from past experiences with wine. All of these come together in our decision-making process to give us a sense of a unified conscious representation. Perception is complicated, but it's fun to explore. So let's continue. So let's define sensation and perception. Sensation involves the reception of energy from the environment and its initial encoding into the nervous system. That differs from perception, where we define perception as the process of interpreting and understanding sensory information. Now that we've defined sensation and perception, we do need to define a couple more terms here. These terms are important in cognition generally, and very important in terms of the study of perceptual processing. They are data-driven, or bottom-up, and conceptual-driven, or top-down. Data-driven is processing that is driven by the stimulus. So we take information, the bits of information from the proximal stimulus. So for example, that might be the image on the retina. And we use that to guide our perceptual processing. Conceptually driven processing involves using higher level knowledge so information that's stored in memory, for example, and we use that to help interpret the sensory information. So I've used three key terms here, two of which are on this slide, data-driven, conceptual-driven, and proximal stimulus. One of the questions that we can ask with respect to perceptual processing is whether our percepts are accurate representations of how the world is actually constructed around us. You've probably had the experience where you've perceived things that do not exist, and we're not talking about hallucinations here, or that you've misperceived or failed to perceive things that 
actually do exist. This general evidence suggests that perception does not provide a veridical treatment of our physical world. That is, we may be ignorant of specific environmental features, or we may construct features that are missing. In this week's homework, you'll be asked to explore this in a little more detail by examining perceptual illusions. I'd like you to take the next 30 seconds to pause and reflect regarding the next question here. Have your senses and perceptions ever fooled you? If so, how? Okay, for those of you with a stopwatch, you caught me. It was only 20 seconds, not 30. But I was so excited to get into this next study. The study by Simons and Levin, 1998, involved two experimenters. The first experimenter approached someone on the campus and asked for directions. Now what happened in that conversation is that a couple of construction workers carrying a door rudely cut through the conversation. During that, experimenter one was replaced by experimenter 2. You can see in panel D that these two experimenters look different. The question is whether the person notices the switch. What was remarkable was that about half of the people noticed the switch. That meant about 50 percent didn't notice the switch. This suggests that our perception and memory of the external world is less than veridical. I hope that you found that an intriguing study. Now let's stop for a moment and review what we know about perception. So perception uses previous knowledge to gather and interpret stimuli registered by the senses. Some of the key features are that it's active, it's data driven, and also conceptually driven. And we'll explore those in a little more detail in a few moments. Now we're ready to begin to address the question of whether and how perception and cognition differ. The image that I've selected for this slide is a beach with uh, so some wet sand and a line drawn on the sand. As we know, with all lines and drawn, drawn in the sand, they can move. I'd like to suggest that the distinction is an artificial distinction because information reception and processing is continuous. This week's open access reading is entitled Commonalities Between Perception and Cognition. The question that's asked is whether visual representations share properties with cognition. If they do, then we could suggest that there's a tight link between perception and cognition. So we're going to explore one of those cognitive features or properties, semantic systematicity the ability to construct correct representations of the meaning of novel stimuli. This particular author would like to argue that a model of visual feature binding does display this particular property. That is, that similar visual scenes have primitive features that are spatially arranged in different combinations. Essentially, Essentially what the author is arguing is that we can construct the meaning of novel visual stimuli despite the fact that the primitive features are spatially arranged differently. So it appears that the distinction between perception and cognition is very blurry. For the most part, it's an artificial distinction based on the fact that information reception and cognitive processing is a continuous activity. It thus begs the question of why scientists, cognitive scientists, and all humans, why do we like to establish clear category boundaries? We'll address this question as we further explore higher level cognition. We have to pause at this point and 
bring in a few more definitions before we can further explore perception. So we're going to start with an understanding of certain frameworks or paradigms that we use to investigate perception. A paradigm is a set of assumptions, concepts, values, or practices that constitutes a way of viewing a particular issue. In approaching the study of perception, we can rely on a classic information processing approach, connectionist approach, or the ecological approach. We'll explore these three different approaches, the information processing approach, connectionist approach, and ecological approach in more detail in Module 2.2. So here's a summary of Module 2.1. Perception involves processing sensory information to the level of meaning or understanding. The distinction between perception and cognition is artificial, and there are several approaches or paradigms to investigate perception. Let's move on now to Module 2.2 and explore more about these paradigms.